Hello everyone and welcome to the webinar about Gecko Autumn 21 release. My name is Koran Aleliak and I am Agilcon's Customer Success Manager and today I will be your host. Presenters for today's webinar are Nel Hrepeunik, Gecko Solution Consultant and Daniel Bogoev, Gecko Solution Architect. We are excited to share with you the most interesting updates from Gecko Autumn 21 release. Our experts are going to present new features and innovations across the Gecko HRM application that will help you connect with your employees in new ways. I would like to invite you to use the Q&A section in your Zoom window for questions. We'll try to address your questions during or at the end of the webinar. Also, at the end of presentation, we will ask you what features would you like to see in Gecko in the future? and we would love to hear your opinion. Just a quick heads up, this webinar is being recorded. Now I'm going to turn the presentation over to Daniel. Daniel. Thank you, Corona. So thank you for the lovely introduction. Um, the agenda today will be first to go over what's new, um, what those features are, what these enhancements are. Then we will actually do a demo so we can show you the features that we have done. We will discuss what our vision for 222 is, um, what we are planning and what we would like to do. This is where we also will require your feedback to see what should be a priority. Uh, finally, we'll also what the next steps are. If you, any of these features you like and you would like to implement what you need to do. And as Corin already mentioned, we will have a Q&A. So let's get started. What's new? The highlights. So what have we changed and what's coming in this release? Um, on the performance plans, we have added feedbacks and meet. Uh, we have revamped the complete document management system. So this is a feature that I'm really excited about because it will bring all the, the documents you have on the employee in one place, easy management. Uh, personal updates are here. So no more phone calls to you and emails to you to change addresses, uh, family members, name changes. We have also added manager requests, allowing managers to transfer an employee from one department to the other. And of course, the most important one, allowing manager to request salary changes for their employees. Finally, Nail will join us and she will represent us what the training administration changes are in the new release. So let's go into each individual change, starting with performance feedback. So I will discuss the different roles and what they can do now. As part of this release, uh, we are now allowing in the performance plan for managers to request feedbacks. The admin will allow to create the model. So we are allowing for feedbacks to be, of course, regular text, so where an employee can write something but we also allow for multiple choice questions or pick, uh, pick list selections where they can pick from a selection of evaluations as they wish. As the employee, so on the employee role, they will receive an email with a link where they click get into Gecko and they will then be able to fill out and submit the feedback. Of course, we're also giving them an option that they don't have to fill out if they don't want to. The document management systems came about because we are now supporting e-signatures and we had to revamp the whole, uh, the way we create documents and the options you have as part of the document managers. So we also allow to have in one place all the documents for quick and easy view with actual links to get to the document. As an admin, of course, this doesn't change much. You can still add document templates. The complete version history will be available. You'll be able to generate documents. And then in the next step, if you wish, you can also send them for your signatures. But you will now, as an admin, see all the documents in one place. So no matter where, onboarding, offboarding, wherever you create documents, they will now be in one place. As an employee, of course, you can, in your profile, you'll be able to see all your documents in one place as well. So contracts, annexes, onboarding certificates, or any other document that has been created in your name. 
updates. So as part of the updates for managers and employees, we are now creating a task management or request management module for admins. So every single task that an employee submits will go into a staging area where HR administrations will review. Once they review it and approve it, it then automatically writes it over to the employee profile. As an employee, you'll be able to, at the current time, change your name, change your uh, contact information, make changes to your address, add and update family members, as well as emergency contact. And then we have a catch-all, which is called other requests, allowing you to submit questions, or if you have the necessary for a document that you need HR to submit, you can then use the other requests option. As team requests, manager requests, team requests, they intertwine. Um, again, as an admin, you will receive all the requests and do a final approval of them. Once you approve it, it will write it over to the employee profile. As a manager, you will now be able to submit a transfer. So if an employee is transferring from your department into another department, of course, the approval process here also includes the new manager who has to review and approve. And once that is approved, it will also make the changes to the employee profile. And the one important one, of course, if you have a good employee and you would like them to promote or change their salary, you'll be able to submit that request as well. On the training administration side, this module has a lot of functionalities and has been expanded further. We can now, as an admin, invite individual employees to register for a training session or a training program. We are now allowing internal lecturers to submit training attendance. So no longer do we want them to print out documents and have it signed and then we have to enter it back into the system. Internal lecturers will now be able to go into Gecko, see the complete list and click everybody that has attended the training as well. As an employee, you'll be able to express interest in a training. So this, if you would like to attend something, you can indicate that you're interested in and select the training session when you are invited. So when the administration opens up a training session and there might be different dates, you can then as the employee choose which date and time you would like to at attend a training session. Okay, the demo today. We will show you in this order. We will first go to the document management system. Uh, after that, we'll take a look at the feedbacks, employee requests, followed by manager requests. And then I will hand it over to Nail, who will show you those cool features that enhancements in the training administration. Okay, starting with the document management, what we will show you today, I will show you the new way you're generating a document. We will show you the centralized document system where everything is one place from where you can also get directly into the document to view it. I will show you also this new system allows you to actually create reports with links directly to the document. So you can see for each, in the, for each employee, how it's grouped, which type of documents they have, and then be able to get into the document itself. So. Let's start with the job documents. Um, of course, most of the time when we're talking about documents, we're talking about contracts and annexes. Of course, this component can be incorporated anywhere you need. So be it recruiting, onboarding, offboarding, or anywhere else. As we can see on the right side, this is the docu e documents it's called now, not the document generator. We can see all the documents we have created for this job. We click on the down arrow. We have two options now. If you have a document that's already been signed, scanned, and you would like to upload it, you can upload it. This way, it will also end up in the document management uh, list. Or we can click Create. It's a new user interface. We once again select what type of template we'll be using. The template are still in your hands, so any update to the templates, the whole version history remains. We click. We can now also choose uh, if it's PDF or DocX, depending on what your requirements are. And then we click 
and creates the document like we did before. What changes now is that if you're adding the e-signature uh, part to it, you can click and then click all the documents that you need to send to be signed digitally. On the employee profile, we have added a new tab, which is called documents. And at the bottom, you will now see all the documents associated with our bill. We can see what type of document it is. So we can see it has multiple contracts and we also have the link to the document. The second part is what I mentioned before. We can now create reports for all employees. You can group them in different uh, categories, but if you group all employees and we group by document type, we can in a report now display all the documents they have. And in the same way as on the employee profile, we can click on the link, which will open up the document. So here we can see additional statistics, how many times it has been viewed. If we click here, we can then enlarge it, get into the document itself. That is our new document management system. Now, if we return back to the next feature, performance feedbacks, what we have done is that the manager now has access to a new tab called feedbacks from where they can select the employees that they would like to request feedback from. We will take a look how the employees submit feedback. So when a manager requests a feedback employee, the employee will get an email with the link to get into the feedback section. And of course, as with everything else in Gecko, they will also have it in my assignments. Let's take a look now at the feedbacks. On the, on the performance plan, we have added a new tab, as mentioned, called feedbacks. Here we can see we have requested two feedbacks, one from Ann Jones, who has already submitted it. And we're still waiting on Alice Smith to submit her feedback. Feedbacks, as mentioned, could be uh, text. so a text field where they can fill out, or it could actually be a selection field where you actually select an answer to the question. On the side of Alice, as mentioned, we now have in my assignments, we can see that Alice needs, is waiting for a feedback for Bill Adams that she needs to, to submit. Once she clicks on the feedback, she will come into this section where she has the text format so she can include everything that she would like to write so this could be we could have multiple text sections and we also have one general pick list where she can select how it is uh how the teammate is performing once you fill it out you don't need to submit it immediately you can come back write edit it again but once you're ready you to submit you submitted it and the person will then see it back on the performance plan, the manager. The feedback is only available for the managers. So we do wanna keep it private so that feel people feel free to answer uh, how they feel and not be concerned that the employee will see it. So this is meant for the manager to see. That would be feedbacks. The next section are employee requests. What we'll show you today is how, where they submit the requests. As mentioned, the employee can submit address changes, family member changes, including emergency contact. Um, they can also change their name and contact information. We also have a catch-all. So these are, this is the other contact HR where any questions you might have for HR you can send through this form. Um, this is a mechanism we've created. So this is not limited to this. These are just the ones we're rolling out now. Um, our clients, and this is already happening with one of them, have many additional ideas, many additional requests they would have, they would like to add. The mechanism is now in place where we can configure these requests to adapt to the requirements you might have. So we're definitely gonna, in the future, see additional uh, features in my requests. And um, the other part of this is, of course, 
the administration part where you'll be managing these requests, overviewing them, assigning them, and we'll take a look at that. Uh, we'll take a look at how the form looks for a new family member, and we'll take a look at what the admin sees once that request is filled. So let's get into the, on the homepage in my requests, we can now see that Bill has an option for personal data updates. We have these three address change, family member change, name or contact information change. When we click on a family member change, we get additional options. So we can add a new family member, update a tax deduction from the dependent, or update an emergency contact. So this could be a spouse, for example. Once we choose which type of selection we would like to do, so we have Alice Smith, we can then this, uh, choose the relationship. We can add a name. If it's active, we can save this. So if you want to come back and you need to add additional information or we can save and submit this request. So I have not filled out something. Once we fill out the request, as mentioned, they don't get automatically updated on the employee profile. What we see is from an administration view, all tasks will go to one place. The tasks will be unassigned. So the administrator can go in, assign it to themselves or assign it to a different HR administrator. On the left side, you will see different types of views. So this could be show me all that are assigned to me. Show me all that are assigned to me still pending approval. So the ones that still need to be reviewed. You can see all the tasks or pending, which ones are pending submission. So this, again, these list views that can then be added, removed as you would like. We now, of course, here are showing all of the lists. And you can see also which type of change there is. So we have some address changes. We have add new family member, which as I showed you, when we click on the request, the request will open up. It will have all the information that the employee submitted, what the family name is, their birthday, all the important data that is required in order to store it. Once the administrator reviews it and approves it, as mentioned, it will then be signed over to the profile. Another neat feature that comes here is based on the tasks available on the left side, we also see the employee name. So if we click on the employee name within the same window, it will actually open up the employee profile. So if you're sending a request and you're not sure and, uh, what the information, current information is, you can click on the name and then actually go to the complete profile. So in this case, you could go in, see what the family member is and just double check to make sure that this family member has not been already added. Moving forward, so we'll take a look at one more. Uh, for example, a contact information change. We can see this one has already been proved completed. Um, and we can see what that change was. On the manager side, we have two types of requests. So this is transfer employee from one department to another. As mentioned, this is a, a a bit longer workflow where the, ma the current manager suggests or uh, adds the request that the employee needs to be transferred from one department to another. Of course, in this step, we also involve the manager of the new department in order for them to review and agree to this change. And once the new manager approves it, it then gets written over to the employee profile. The second change is salary, where a manager can request a salary change for the employee. In this case, it goes to the HR administrator for review. The, admi the HR administrator, in order to make it simple for the manager, they only add a few data. The HR administrator needs, needs to add the rest of the data before they approve the request, and that gets entered into the employee profile. 
we'll take a look at the salary change view. And let's go into the demo. So on the homepage, in my requests, only managers will get a new drop down list, which is called team. In the team section, they will have these two options. So one is transfer employee and one is change salary. If we click on the change salary, we get the setting, the type of changes change salary. They of course select their own, uh, their team member. They will only have access to their own team. Once you select the team data, we already currently display what their current job data is, right? So we want to see where they are today in order to see where they're moving. So we current salary, of course, is of interest in order then to enter the new salary. So if there's changes, other changes, job grade, pay grade, the manager enters them in. As mentioned, the job record has a lot more information that is needed, but we don't want the manager to be doing that. We want them to have as little as possible work. Also, some of this data that the HR administrator entered for the job, they might not be familiar with. So we that second step by the HR administrator is that to complete that record before it gets copied over to the employee profile. He can save the change or he can save and submit as with all the records. If we now go into the request, we can see that the request is pending approval where the HR administrator can review it, approve it, reject, they can send it back. So maybe if the salary was too high and is not acceptable, they can send it back to the manager to make those changes and lower the salary to the requirements. We can change owner at any step if an HR administrator is assigned the task, but maybe they're on leave or they're out sick, we can then reassign and somebody else can take over that task. At the bottom, we will see um, all the information. So we see that it's a salary change for whom we are changing. Of course, from which date on they will have the salary change. We can see their previous, uh, their new changes and their previous record. And that is a quick overview of the salary changes. I will hand it over to Nell. Uh, will go... Sorry, yeah. Daniel, for interruption, but we have just received the question and I think it's okay. important to maybe answer it now because it's uh, regarding the documents. Uh, okay. Paula wants to know how does it look like when they send us back signed documents? Are we able to show it? Yeah, if through the A documents, so if we go back to Bill and we go back into their job record, and I don't have it here, for example, once we send to A signature, so we send the document to be signed and all the parties to the documents, uh, the document signed the document, it will then come back into Gecko automatically. And it will be available to be seen on the document management side list. So the whole process, it does send it out for A signatures. Once it's completed, it comes back into Gecko. Any other questions right now? Uh, no, at the moment, that's it. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So now to hand it over to my colleague who will show you a little in detail what the training administration changes are. Yes, so let's dive into uh, training administration. Um, like Danny already mentioned, we've had some big upgrades to the training administration module in Gecko. So today I will show you how it looks like to invite employees to um, register to a training program. So this is a fun new functionality that actually allows employees to pick and choose to which session they wish to register to. Then we will look at uh, submitting training attendance by the internal lecturer. And we will see how um, 
it looks like uh, for an employee to register directly to a training session. Um, so um, I will take over uh, the screen right now and let's jump into demo. Um, okay, um, so first, um, just a little um, fun addition that we've had um, is that employees also get uh, access to the training library through uh, shortcuts on their homepage which actually allows them to see all the trainings that are marked um, public or where they can express interest. Um, so like Danny mentioned before, employees can now actually express interest to a training. So on the header, they will see a button where they can say, okay, I am interested in this training. Um, they can also add um uh by when they wish to complete it by so that the administrators have an easier um time when they need to actually schedule those trainings they get access to some basic data and then we can also see um a report which makes it easier for administrators to actually schedule those sessions then if we move on to registrations or invitations to register via a training program, what a training program is, is actually it's um, a bundle of training, training sessions that administrators um, assign to a program. So here we can see a training program of language courses that our company has decided to offer on this winter semester. Uh, we can set some limitations. So, for example, here we said that an employee can only register to one course. Um, we can see what training sessions we've assigned to this program, and then we can invite employees to register via a mass list. So, uh, we can actually uh, invite multiple um, employees at the same time. How it looks like when the employee receives that um invitation is that um, employee gets an email with the link and they also get an assignment um, on their homepage in Geco. Uh, if they click it, they get this page where they can see a description and they can also see all the sessions that are connected to this program. Here they can see also if any trainings or training sessions are still available because we track how many, um, employees have already registered. We know that sessions sometimes have limits on attendance. So we also um, take care of that, that the employee cannot register if the session is already full or they can simply mark, I will not register. Um, once they register to a session, it will actually uh, disable any other registration because we marked it that the employee can only register for one session. Um, so that is one functionality of training programs. Employees get, employees get the option to actually choose to which session, to which training they would like to attend. Um, and then we also have that option to actually invite employees to register to a specific session. So we already know um, which specific session we have, and we can also invite them directly to the session. Again, the employee will get um, an assignment on their homepage and they will also get an email with the link. That link takes them to a page. It looks similar, but it's a little bit different because here we have um, schedules, so specific schedules listed of that session. And we only have the option to register or will not register. Um, so that is if we invite employees to a specific training session. Um, then the third thing that we've had uh, updated uh, in the training administration module is for inter internal training, where we have an internal lecturer. Um, that lecturer actually gets a notification and an assignment after that session has completed. 
that they need to come into Geco and mark the attendance of the people that registered. Um, so if the lecturer navigates through an assignment or through the link uh, that they received on their email, they get to this page where they can mark attendance on a mass list so they don't need to click everyone that was registered, which makes it easier if we have a, we had a lot large session um, and they can simply mark who attended, who did not attend, or maybe somebody just attended uh, one, one schedule or um, just attended partly. After they mark it, they submit it, and that's um, then confirmed. So the attendance is then confirmed by the internal lecturer. So those were the big uh, updates that we've had with the training administration. Um, yeah, Danny. Back to you. Thank you. Okay, let's get back to the next step. So these are all the changes that came about. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Of course, now we are in December, Christmas, New Year's is around the corner. And of course, we are also planning of what we'll be doing next year. Here is, as Korana mentioned, uh, we would like to get your input. We would like to see what your interests are, um, what the priorities for 2022 for Gecko should be. Of course, before I get into it, I have to do the forward-looking statement. Anything that I will be discussed, the ideas that we'll be showing you may or may not end up. Uh, like I said, we are now currently planning and we'll have a final version of the features and the mo new modules that we would like to do uh, in 2002 available shortly. But for now, I would just like to show you what we are planning. So one of the ideas that we are is that we, will, uh, we would like to implement this OKR. So internally, we have started using it or internally in uh, the company. We would like to also have a mechanism where we would add it to the product. So object key results planning and the interrelations with that. The other option, uh, the other idea that we are considering is skills management. So meaning where employees can enter their skills, where other employees will be able to evaluate the skills of the employee. Um, so that we know and then match those skills to the job positions and see what they're fit, uh, where they are strong and what they might be uh, more suitable for. Uh, so we always talk, the third one is we talk about BI analytics. Uh, we talk about a very strong platform that Salesforce performs uh, for reports and dashboards. There is a more advanced feature, so more of an BI analytics, which is available. And we would, as with reports, where we have predefined reports and you could create your own reports and you can, we have predefined dashboards. We also are considering creating a more advanced BI analytical dashboard where you could see interesting cases such as seeing at which age, for example, most of the employees might be leaving. This is something we had um, used the case where we figured out that males in age 30 to 35 who just received a child are more likely to leave as they're looking for greater salary opportunities, for example. And finally, something we have been hearing from you guys, and we are definitely aware that we need to uh, address our uh, uh, enhancements in the UX or so user experience. Uh, one of them, I think, is responsiveness, uh, faster improvements. Uh, the other options are mass edits, so allow you inline editing so you don't have to reach record, click edit. Um, a user experience on the home board, a home board is being discussed as a redesign of it. Yeah, more and more um, feedback is coming that an integration with Slack and Microsoft Teams would be a great idea. And then app, we will we would like to, we are considering in-app customer feedback. So meaning where in the applications, once you go in, we would actually have a pop-up where you can submit 
your feedback or we'll ask you questions what could be improved or not improved so these are some of the ideas of course we are we will continue to enhance existing modules add new functionalities like for example in the training administration we showed you today so are do we have now that survey corona uh, yes, uh, thank you, Neil. Thank you, Daniel, for sharing the most interesting updates for Gecko Autumn 21 release and showing us the glimpse of what's coming in the future. Of course, we now invite you to tell us which of the functionalities should be a priority for Gecko in 2022 by answering the poll questions. If you have uh, any more questions, the time to ask them is now. And uh, Daniel, we, we have two more questions. Uh, so I would, uh, in the meanwhile, while we are waiting for the results, uh, first question would be for you, Daniel, for the feedback section, will the employee also see their feedback or just the manager? So as of right now, the idea is, the way it is in the product is no, they do not see the feedbacks that other employees have provided for them. This is something that can be discussed and opened up. The idea is basically that people, when submitting their feedback, are honest and not have to worry about the employees seeing it and challenging to them. But nothing is locked in Gecko. So if this is something you would like to desire, definitely you could have feedbacks. What we usually do, though, is uh, something like high fives when an employee submits a positive, uh, positive comments to the employee, they can see those. So it is a different functionality, the feedback compared to the um, high five or... Okay. Yeah, Sorry. Okay, great. Uh, we have a question from Nina. I think this one is for you, Nell. A uh, lecturer sees the list to confirm attendance right after registration is completed or there is a step before. Um, yeah, well, um, it's like this. So when the registrations are completed, we get an attendance record automatically created. And then when the session is actually um, finished, uh, we have that offset with when we can say, um, actually the training administrator can say, okay, after the session finishes, I don't know, two hours later, I want that lecturer to be notified that they need to mark attendance. And that's when the internal lecturer gets the assignment, uh, gets access to, to this record where they can mark attendance. So this is something that's actually controlled by the administrator, the training administrator. Okay, thank you, Nil. Um, maybe just to comment the results of the uh, survey that we have uh, just launched, so the First thing you would like to see is uh, managing employee skills. That would be the most popular thing to see in Gecko in 2022. Um, Daniel, maybe did we expect this one? What, what do you say? Uh, yes, this has been coming up a lot. So I'm definitely not surprised by the choice that these skills would be something that employees, uh, clients would be interested in. Okay, the second place would be advanced business intelligence analytics and user experience. I guess that's also something on our list for 2022. Yeah, this is definitely a very cool feature and definitely gives you advanced look into the mounting data that you actually are having Gecko and could be used in a positive way. Perfect. Uh, maybe just a question that has also popped up, uh, Daniel, I think for you, can also other requests be added? Yes, I believe I mentioned that at the beginning. Um, we, what we have done is what we showed you today is just some of these examples that can be done. What's important to know behind here is the technology that allows you to quickly configure also other requests. Um, so yeah, you'll be able to add your own requests, whatever those is. I think one of our clients already has a list full of additional requests that they would like to do, so. Okay, perfect. Um, we don't have any more questions uh, from our participants. So we are slowly coming to the end of this webinar. Um, maybe just to check the next steps, Daniel, so we don't forget about this. Yeah. Um, of course, let us know if you are interested in the new features and we uh, will prepare a plan. 
please be aware there is a cost associated with the configuration of these features. We are av available for you. Contact us uh, or our colleague uh, Gregor uh, at his email. We would, of course, kindly invite you to join us on our next webinar, Spring uh, 2022. Uh, and at this moment, I would like to thank everybody for participating. We will, of course, send the materials from the webinar to all attendees via email in the next few days. We will also send you a short survey about, about webinar content and organization. I hope we will stay in touch and we will see you on our next webinar. Whole Gecko Teams wishes you great holidays and all the best in 2022. Uh, take care and goodbye. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.